At ease. It's your boy Soul Immortal. Man, a few days ago I was in a live chat uh, and there was some discussion about men and women, just some general discussion. And, and, and very briefly, the topic of MGTOW came up. Now, in the thread, a couple of brothers start talking about MGTOW, and, uh, and, and one brother in particular said that there was separation between the races when it comes to, Mig, to, uh, come to MGTOW. And I was just like, interesting, you know? And, and it made me think about this situation that I experienced several years ago with a guy by the name of James Ray. And it just sparks the question, is there racism in MGTOW? January 1998, a young soul immortal joins the U.S. Army, right? Now, anybody that knows anything about going to basic training, you know that basic training is like a gumbo of humanity. You got a mixture of all races, all backgrounds, all religions, all creeds. And it seems like everybody just fits in this particular faction, right? So you got your mama's boys, you got your your, your ex thugs, you got your, your your nerdy guys, you got you got the guys that that uh maybe have a parent that's in the military and, and, and they just seem to know it all. But there was this one particular guy, James Ray. He fit in his own faction. And if I had to label this guy's faction, it would be it would hands down be the faction of a racist. Now it, it was evident from day one that that James didn't like anybody that wasn't like him. All the soldiers knew it, all the drill sergeants knew it. It was just a given. Now o over this six weeks course of um, uh, basic training, you know, Ray he, he had a few run-ins, man, but but nothing major. And over this whole time, I had very few words with Ray. I just didn't have a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of contact with him, you know, one on one. So I never had had any issues. But that would soon change. So it's March, 1998, and basic training is over. Now when basic training is over, all the soldiers go to their respective training facilities. Some guys with uh, certain job descriptions may go out to the West Coast. Some guys with other job descriptions may go to the East Coast and do their training. I stuck around in uh, Fort Knox to complete mine. Lo and behold, Private Soul Immortal and Private James Ray had the same MOS. 63 Tango, Bradley Mechanic Whore. Now, uh, the training afterwards, which we call AIT, it was a little bit different. You, you had a little bit more freedom, right? Now, you, you had three options as far as things you could do on the weekend, right? It was limited. You could either, one, go to the bowling alley, which is about a mile down the road. Two, go to the movies, which was in the courtyard. Or three, you could entertain the KFCs, what uh, what the people, what the locals call the Kentucky Fat Chicks, and these are the women that just roam around, roam around the uh, military facilities looking for young Joes to to swoop up and get pregnant by and marry and and all this nonsense, right? So those are the three options, right? So this is what happened. One day I'm coming back uh, from the movie theater, right? And I get back to the barracks and I'm walking down the hallway. And I see guys just staring at my door. It's like a circle around my door, man. I'm like, what in the world happened? I'm thinking drill sergeant went there and tore my bed up or, or my shoes wasn't lined up right or something. And I get to the door and there's a swastika on my door. And all I said was, who did it? And they said, Ray did it, man. And I said, where's Ray? They said, he's on his way to the movie theater. I beeline to the movie theater, right? I'm hot. I'm heated. The whole time I'm thinking, why would this guy, why would this guy try me like this, you know? So I get to the movie theater, man. Ray's getting ready to walk in uh, to the actual theater. I said, Ray, step out, man. Let, let me holler at you real quick. 
So Ray steps outside. I'm like, dude, why would you put that on my door? And Ray was just like, what are you talking about? Like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Playing stupid. I, I don't know what you're talking about. So I was just like, okay, so you don't know what I'm... Bam, I haul off on his chin, man. And me and Ray just start off tumbling. Now, as bad as I would love to say that I just dusted Ray off on the spot, I can't. For every, for every blow that I put on his chin, he was coming back with another blow. For every body blow I gave him, he was coming with another blow. I mean, we were pretty much punch and punch, back and forth, for what seemed like three days, man. It probably wasn't about 30 seconds. So they shut that down, man. Some other drill sergeants took us up back to the office, man. Our drill sergeants came in. It's the weekend. Uh, we had a big falling out, man, and a uh, long discussion. Long story short, they put me and Ray in the same room, a two-man room, and told us that we were going to hash it out, you know, make it right, or we were going to have major problems. Now, we only had about two weeks left of training, so it's almost done. And in my mind, I'm thinking, you know what? I can handle this, man. I can just ignore this cat for a couple of weeks, man, and carry on my life, man. I'm not gonna even sweat it, right? So about a week later, man, me and Ray hadn't said one single word together. I mean, we're, we're practically three or four feet from each other in a small room. We hadn't said one single word, right? And it's a weekend, a weekend comes up. You know, everybody's still, you know, relaxing, doing their own thing. And they say, you know, drill sergeant walks in the room. At ease, you know, we lock it up. He goes over to Ray, and he says, um, he said, are you two getting along? Ray said, yes, drill sergeant. He looks at me, are you two getting along? Yes, drill sergeant. And he puts his hat on Ray's nose and said, Private Ray, what soul of mortal's mother's name? What city is he from? I don't know, drill sergeant. He comes to me. How many brothers and sisters does Private Ray have? What's his dog's name? I don't know, Drill Sergeant. You guys have 45 seconds to get downstairs. Now, we're in weekend clothes. So we go downstairs, man. Long story short, uh, Drill Sergeant tells us to just take off running. He said, y'all run until I get tired. We take off running. He gets in his car and he drives away. So we're, we're making laps around the building, man. I say at least 45 minutes to an hour and a half, man. I was dusting. I don't know. But uh, they finally brought us in. Me and Ray, we went, I mean, it's late night at this point. We went, we took our showers, and, uh, and we got in the bed. And at that point, we still didn't say one single word together to each other. Now, now this was the icebreaker. Now, as I mentioned earlier, when the drill sergeant came in, and he had us running, it was the weekend, man, so we were in weekend clothes. So I'm wearing jeans, and I think I had on like a collared shirt, man. Something that you just kind of wear out <clears throat> to hang out or whatever, right? But the outfit that Ray had on, man, was, was the complete spark of the icebreaker, right? So like I said, man, we both got showered up, man. We both got in our beds, man. Act like it nothing ever happened. Still hadn't said a word to each other, man. So I'm laying in the bed, man, for about 10 minutes. And I'm thinking about what Ray had on. And, and I don't know if y'all remember this, man. Maybe some of y'all older guys remember that. Remember this. But y'all remember this brand called Body Gloves? And like, for a small period of time, man, I had to be young. I had to be about, I, mean, I had to be about nine or ten years old. Everybody was wearing body gloves. It was like this, like, tight biking shorts. And it was like the style, man. People were wearing this stuff everywhere. I, I have old vacation pictures, man, while I was wearing this stuff. And I was like, what the, what the world was I wearing? Anyway, when we took off running, man, I'm looking at Ray. And Ray had on some black and gold body glove biking shorts and, and a white beater. So I'm laying in bed, man, and I'm thinking about it. And I just break the silence. I said, bruh. Where in the world did you get some body gloves at? And this cat just broke out laughing, man. And, and, and for the next three or four minutes, man, I'm just ragging. I'm like, dude, I haven't seen none of them in, in, in 10 years. You know, like, like who, who does that? And this cat just over there cracking out, man. I'm over there crying, laughing, dude. I'm like, this dude had on some body gloves. And after that, man, we went to sleep. Didn't say one single word, right? 
So I wake up the next morning, it was a Sunday, still a weekend, man. And I remember this as plain as day. I remember waking up, man, my eyes opened up, and I could see Ray in my peripherals. He was sitting on his bed, fully dressed. And Ray said, he said, man, I didn't see a black man in real life until I was 12 years old. And I was like, what? I'm like, where you from, dude? And I can't remember what, what he called it, but all I remember him saying it was, it was the hills of Tennessee. And I was like, you never seen a black dude? He said, you know, I'll see black people on TV. He said, but I never seen a black person in real life until I was 12 years old. And I was like, wow, you know what I'm saying? So we got to talking, you know, about, you know, a few things, man. And he would always say, you know, well, mom and daddy said this. And mom and daddy always told me that, you know, black people were this or black people you know, or Mexican people were this. And mom and daddy always, and I, and I started to get an understanding of, of the mentality of Ray. Long story short, man, like I said, we had a few weeks left, man, at this point. We're maybe a week out before we go to our, our, uh, our uh, duty stations. You know, we're, we're still waiting to find out where we're going. And, uh, and me and Ray got to the point where we were cordial, man. You know, we would talk, small talk. I learned a little about him. He learned a lot about me. And, uh, but I figured we would just go on our separate ways, man. I would never see this guy again. So we're in formation, man, days before we get out of training. And the drill sergeant is sitting there calling out duty stations. And he's call, he'll call your name out and he'll tell you where you're going. You know, he called my name out. Private Soul Immortal, Fort Stewart, Georgia. And he's just calling names out. He's calling names out. Now, while he's calling these names out, I just kind of float off. I'm like, man, Georgia's going to be the bomb. I'm thinking uh, I'll be right by Savannah. I'll be, you know, a couple of hours from Florida. I'll be by South Carolina. I'm like, life is going to be good. And by the time I get that thought processed, I hear Private James Ray, Fort Stewart, Georgia. And I'm like, why, God? I'm like, how, 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 how is this guy just stuck to wherever every single place that I go, man? And I was like, Georgia, here we come. So it's June 1998. And I, you know, I get to Fort Stewart, Georgia. We do all of our processing, you know, and I, and I go to my unit. And, and you would think Fort Stewart, Georgia, man, it's it's uh, you know home of Third ID, man. Several, several battalions, several companies. It's, it's several units there, man. And in my mind, I was thinking, you know, I, I, I bet I, I see Ray at some point, you know, over the next few years. I, I, I'm sure that I'll cross paths with this guy at least once or twice, right? So. I get to my unit, you know, introduced uh, to my my uh, my sergeant and, and the crew and all that. And, and guess who's in the motor pool? Almost like they were just waiting on me. Private Ray. And I was like, of course he is. Like, 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 why wouldn't at this point? Why wouldn't he be? You know what I mean? Now, any guy, anybody that knows anything about Fort Stewart, Georgia, 3rd Infantry Division, 3rd Infantry Division, it's rapid deployment. At that time, we were on a uh, um, a cycle to Kuwait, so within weeks of us getting there, we were on a plane, headed on a, a six-month rotation to Kuwait, within weeks. So we're in Kuwait, me and Ray are working uh, pretty much side by side, and we're on the same team. And things were cool, no issues, no problems, but everybody could still sense th this racist side of this man. Even people people that just crossed his path, you could just sense it. It was just so strong in him. And, uh, but me and Ray, we, we didn't have any problems, you know? I know that he's deep down he still felt a, felt a certain way about me, but you know, it was what it was. So th this is what happened, guys. We get to the very end of this rotation. It was supposed to be from end of June or July to, uh, uh, Christmas, December was supposed to be home by Christmas. So you know, we we, we wrap it up with all the business we had in Kuwait. Uh, we head back to uh, Kuwait City, and we're cleaning vehicles. We, you know, the, the process of getting back stateside is, is it takes a few weeks, man, to clean vehicles and clean all this equipment. And the day before we're going home, the craziest thing happened. So I was married at the time. You know, I go in and I, uh, you know, everybody gets off at the same time. We go use the phones. 
and I call my wife and she's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, you know, we can ready to head out tomorrow. I'll be heading home tomorrow. She was like, they're bombing over there. And I'm like, what? Now at this time, I can almost hear the chatter. Everybody on the phone is kind of confused, like what was going on? And I hear people out there talking. I'm like, let me find out, figure out what's going on, you know? A few minutes later, we had a big formation and everybody's amped up to go home. Our uh, commander comes out and he, he, he discusses there had been an issue up north in Iraq. And he says, all this preparation, we cleaned all these vehicles, we're gonna get all this stuff out and we're gonna head back north to Iraq. So it was like, dang it. Now this is, this is one of the shortest wars, man, and many of you guys have probably never even heard of it. Operation Desert Fox. Long story short, they put me and Ray in an M88 recovery vehicle, right? I think I drove most of the time and Ray was a man in the 50 cal, right? So we head back north to Iraq, man. It's, it's, it's a long trip, man. We get to Iraq, man, and we're on the border. We're setting up perimeters. We're, we're going to certain locations. And, and I can say this, man. Th this was the turning point of, of Ray and my relationship. See, I don't care. I don't care what color you are. I don't care what religion you are, you are. I don't care, you know, how many times you pray a day, what church you go to, any of that stuff. Any any man, once you get placed in certain situations, or or once men have a certain common ground that's just undisputable, all that stuff goes out the window. All that stuff goes out the window. Once me and Ray found ourselves in certain situations and I knew that he was the man that was going to keep me alive and I was the man that's going to keep him alive in certain situations, there's something about, it, it doesn't matter what you were raised knowing, all that stuff goes out the window. And I don't want to go into detail, man, on, on a lot of the things that, that me and Ray went through over those next, you know, four to six days, man, but it, it was very intense. And at the end of the day, man, I knew that this guy, if nobody else, had my back on this planet. You know what I mean? So, you know, we get back, man. We get back to Kuwait after all this is over, man. And we get back stateside. And Ray and I became pretty good friends, man. I mean, we would, uh, every once in a while, we might go have a beer after work. You know, uh, he was working on cars a lot. I used to go work on cars with him, man, if I had car trouble. He would uh, tell me to bring my truck over there, man, and help me fix my engine. We just became cool. Cool guys, man. And, and it, just, it just makes me think about this MGTOW thing, right? So, MGTOW. Th this is how I see things, guys. I mean, you look at the court systems. I mean, you look at the way marriage is set up. You look at the way divorces are set up, alimony, all, all that stuff. You look at all these rape allegations, these false rape, at rape allegations. You know, men are losing jobs, men are losing their careers over stuff that they didn't do. You look at all this stuff that's affecting men in the year 2018, and I don't care how you look at it, guys. We're at war. When a man goes to divorce court, and, and, and the judge is slapping on him with, with alimony or, or an extreme amount of child support. It's not about him being black, white, Hispanic, Asian, a Middle Eastern guy. All that stuff, it doesn't matter. When a woman, when a woman goes to a, a, her HR department and, and, and makes a false allegation against a man, it, it, doesn't make, it, doesn't make, it doesn't matter if he's white, black, green, blue, it, all that stuff. It doesn't matter. And I said, I'll let to say this. When it comes to MGTOW, in my mind, it seems like, if anything, this would be one of the tools that, that bridges the gaps between races of men. And, and this is what I mean. I mean, am I saying MGTOW is the cure for racism? No, that, that's not even remotely close. That's impossible. You're going to always have... You're going to always have people hate me because my skin is brown. You're going to always have people hate certain people because they pray so many times a day. 
You're going to always have some people that hate a group of men because they're white. Th that's always going to happen. But in my mind, MGTOW is, 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 is a very positive ideology, man, that, that, that gives a man reason to leave all that at the door when he, when he enters these forums, man. Because the issues we're discussing, they have nothing to do with race. When we're talking about gaining knowledge and wisdom and understanding, it has nothing to do with race. It's, it, 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 we're discussing men becoming better men. Now, have I seen my share, uh, my fair share of, of hate comments on, on uh, videos that I posted? You know, over the last, I guess I've been making MGTOW videos for, you know, a year or a year and a half or whatever it is. I've seen one, maybe two over all that time of guys making some kind of hate comment, you know. Which that's just, that's just, you know, a uh, 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 nature of the beast. But at the same time, I see myself interacting with men that have similar issues that I probably would have never interacted with just on a daily basis, just roaming, roaming around, roaming around town, right? I've even had guys with with uh, swastikas as their uh, as their picture. I've had guys with Confederate flags as their picture make positive comments, man. And, and I'm sure that on a daily basis, man, in, 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 the, in the outside world, I mean, these guys would have had any kind of normal conversation. So if anything, man, I, I see I see MGTOW as a tool to to mitigate racism, man. I see it as a beautiful thing, man. Brothers coming together, man, talking about common issues. Doesn't matter if you're black, white, green, blue, whatever, man. Men are men. Now, concerning Mr. James Ray, I haven't seen James, man, in over 20 years. But but I think it's odd, man, that the guy that painted a swastika on my door in 1998, that I would take a bullet for this guy today without even thinking about it, man. And I'm thinking, if me and Ray can have that relationship, man, after what him and I went through, man, then, then all men should be able to, man. I, I, I see MGTOW as, 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 a, as a major tool, man, that can bridge that gap, man. I just really do. But that's all I have on that, guys. MGTOW versus racism. It's your boy, Solomortal. And I'm out.